and welcome to Remember When with Dion Adore, uh, a podcast where I asked a guest each week to remember when something happened in pop culture history that somehow affected them, something like that. It'll be good fun. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Today my guest is Gemma Garrett, Hello. model, influencer, entrepreneur, bulldog ma. Bulldog ma? <laughs> the last one was right. <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure about the rest, but okay. Do you, do you have a bulldog? I have a bulldog. And your bulldog's called? Peggy C. Do you know what I love when people name animals after, like, human names? Yeah, I know, like Gavin. Gavin. Yeah. My my cousin has a, a pug called Frank, and I think that's class. Frank. Yeah. Was I went shit and named my cat Buttons. Like, mm. which is a wee, a wee pet name. Like, a wee, that's, a, that's a legitimate name. For a cat. For yeah. a pet, which I think is a wee bit shit. Also, my cat is an absolute dickhead. <laughs> like, I have no time for that cat. I did when I had four legs. <laughs> got, How many legs does he have now? Well, he's got three. I'm counting. <laughs> he's got... Right. My cat's the sort of cat who definitely... Like, he, he, like, definitely votes to UP. He's a wee shit. I'm going to have to stop this conversation right now. <laughs> Only joking. My cap is on. I saw him in the post station where we had on. We we looky looky way bands. <laughs> Second day you pay him like a fucking see we three legged shite. Yeah. Tell me about Peggy C. So Peggy C. Um, I had two bulldogs before Peggy C. Buddy and Stella, and they were my life. And sadly passed away. And I got tricked into getting Peggy C. Because someone contacted me and said, "Look how gorgeous she is. She needs a new home." Oh my god! Praying on your vulnerability, having yeah. lost two bulldogs. Um, I was in London at the time. Um, Blitz, shock, and um, said, right, she can come for a weekend. So I came home from London. So where was the dog coming from? She was in Belfast, but right. I was in London. So came home, took her for the weekend, and that was about 16 months ago. And then that's it? You've so, kept the dog since? She's still with Do me. Do the original owners know she's still at your house? Uh, yes, she's still on trial. Ah, <laughs> But she's a wee dote. She's but, not a dickhead. So why bulldogs? This is your third bulldog. They're class-like. But why, like, do you know, obviously, people... Like, you specifically love mm. bulldogs then? I love bulldogs now. I love the, I love their characteristics and just the whole thing. But I didn't know anything about bulldogs beforehand. Right. It was the person I was with at the time loved bulldogs. Uh, they're a bit of a status dog, which is a bit embarrassing now. Do you mean, like, you look like a, just a pure powerful bitch when you've got a bulldog? Yeah, it's a bit of a, a status thing Like, your bulldog's going to gonna wear fucking furs and yeah. a big chunky chain. <laughs> but I didn't know that at the time. So then I was just left with Buddy and Stella and I just, they're a lovely breed. Do you know what would be funny? Like you out, like you out in the park with your big fucking power bulldog and me with my wee shit three-legged cat <laughs> on a leash. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there was to, used to be a woman in my street before I moved who used to walk her cat on a leash. Do you walk your cat? No, I fucking mean look at my cat. <laughs> I mean, That's totally. terrible, I've been sorry for buttons. No, I used to love buttons until he became a full ball bag. Like, do you know what he has? Do you know what it is too? He's full hooked on disco dust, which is what we call catnap in our house. Do you know catnap? No. So it's like full, like cocaine for cats. Oh, great. And you put it out in them and start going, and then they like roll around on it and they cover their whole body on it and they just lie there all like like they're having an orgasm. Like he is Can having... Can you get this for humans or what? I know. Or is it just cocaine? <laughs> it's <called> cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> um, he buzzes off it and now all the time when you see him he's just yapping for disco dust and you're like, we have no relationship anymore. All I am, do you use your dealer? <laughs> <laughs> the cat dealer, I love it. That's not um, what I wanted in my life is just to be dishing out disco dust to my cat all the time. Yeah. Um, but I I think definitely after this cat go and I look I googled the other day how long the cats live because I was like I've had you about seven years Dude, that's terrible I know <laughs> I'm the worst cat ma I, I like see the start when I first got him if he even went out my front door I'd be run out after him I'd be like where like trying to like molly coddle him he was fully my baby and, now you're and like, then when I up. had a baby <laughs> that is why a cat or dog is not for Christmas now that I have a baby I'm all I'm just going to keep giving him disco dust until he until he, <laughs> until he, just he goes. pops his clogs that's the same God forgive you I do love him I do no. love but we got another cat then called Zippy. Right. Because we thought that'd be cute, Buttons and Zippy. Um, and he was a full wee street cat. Like he was a wee, he was like so, the other one was, is like, I just want to sleep on the sofa, but wee Zippy would be like. Was out with the lads? I'm going to go out and like party. <laughs> like, okay. did you see a wee cat meme with him like drinking a double KD? That's fully Zippy. What Zippy. happened to Zippy? Is he still? He, he, he's a full roamer. There's a Facebook page like that's like nearby lost and found cats and dogs and all. He's always on it. He's always on it. I always have to go. He's not missing. He's just out having a good time. Like leave him be. It's don't. so weird that cat owners can go a couple of days without seeing their cat. Like yeah. if I don't see Peggy for two minutes, I'm like, yeah, but she's probably eating your sofa. Oh right, done that. Yeah, definitely done that. So my cat's up. Like 
my niece was in the swimming pool, right, changing rooms, and texts me going, your cat's in here, about a <laughs> mile from my house. <laughs> I swear to God, the cat was just in the changing rooms. And I went to the post office one day about half a mile from my house and they were like, your cat's always on here up on the ledge. <laughs> like sitting up where people like get their, get their like gyro or whatever. She's up, my, he is just up sat on the ledge. Just she, like, he. She doesn't even whatever know what gender the fuck. cat is. Gender neutral, it's a non-binary cat. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I, so like, that's why I'm like, right, see, I don't have the responsibility on me to, like, are you a responsible person? Uh, when it comes to Peggy Sue, yeah. I when prefer animals to, to humans, you say? Yeah. So. That's what people say. I think about dog owners is that they realise the dogs are so loyal and mm-hmm. so nice and humans are full dickheads. Yeah. I like I like about three people. Do you? Three, about three humans and then about 6,000 dogs. Do you have many close friends? Because I've got two and I'm out and proud about that. Like, I've only got two close friends. I am very lucky. I've got a, a small, very small circle of good friends. But it's taken me to... 40 years old to whittle out the decades. Aye. You sort of get like less, you've less tolerance for bullshit as you get older. Yeah. See turning 40. Mm. What was that like for you? Well, I'm, I I feel as if I'm in the middle of a breakdown. Oh, you're really <laughs> holding it together, Gemma. You look great. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I think without being, because um, I know this is supposed to be funny, I think getting older is a privilege. The alternative is to be dead. Absolutely. I mean, so. But that's the thing. It's like, see, when like, you see women on TV and they're expected to not age and then also age gracefully at the same time. Like, I know. But what I do mean, you, you want us to do? You absolutely can't win. And I have a wee podcast as well. And me and Ashley Coyle were talking about this. You know, you filter your pictures and people are like, she's filtered her pictures. You don't filter them. She looks like, like shit. Yeah. She looks like, she looks yeah. 40 now, you know. so. And also brands, like for the likes of you and Ashley that are working with brands mm-hmm. online, if you're not putting the filters on and making everything look really beautiful, yeah. they're like, well, we don't really necessarily, you're not selling our product as well as you could. No, so you're forced to do that. And I do makeup as well. And I get these brides coming in with like these over filtered, perfect airbrush pictures. And I'm like, love. Do you mean of like a reference? Uh huh. And I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I am not Harry Potter. I. But do you know what I mean? <laughs> What is going on in your head? And it might You're be. You're There's not enough foundation in the world. And there may be really Irish skin, ginger, Irish skin, and they brought in a picture of Kim Kardashian. And I'm like, she's Armenian. Yeah. Do you Embr- know what I mean? Embrace your Irish skin, ginger hair. So I used to work. I don't know if you know this. I used to work for Urban Decay in Debenhams and Lancome for years. I say years. It was like on and off because I wasn't that good of an employee. I'd be like, I'm out and all. I'd be like, I have to come on today. So I worked like through a temping agency. So I just be like in and out. And I completely it's different you're like an actual makeup artist I was like a 19 year old drama student who had absolutely zero training in just anything looking a bit of money. just looking about a money just like a part time job and I had to do a bridal party <gasps> I had to do a mother of the bride a bride not for me it was great crack <laughs> <laughs> Three bridesmaids, right? And I remember a sister-in-law who wasn't a bridesmaid. I thought it was a wee bit cruel. It's like mm, everyone here is in the bridal party, and she sh- anyway. Well, again, we won't talk about that. Oh shit! Have mm. we have we opened a wound? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to bitch about somebody? No, no, no. I love my sister-in-law a lot, but I wasn't bridesmaid either. Oh great. Um, Fuck yeah, her. moving on from I, that. So I had to do. I they came in two Debenhams like the morning of their wedding. And with Urban Decay, you used to get your makeup done free if you bought three products. So they were coming, I'm just buying like, buy like three lip glosses. And then I was like doing their makeup. And I was all, you do realise I am shit. Like you're going to look shit. And this, this is, probably is your gonna... wedding day? Like I'm... who wants to go the whole way into the heavens on your wedding day? I'm doing like glitter liner. No. <laughs> Full bright pink lipstick. Like I went for it. Um, but brides are mental. Like I would get an email at three o'clock in the morning. Pop up. Can you do my makeup for my wedding? That's it. That's yeah. as much information I get. And then I'm like, will when I be cheeky it? back or will I just play along with this? Mm. So I'm just like, yeah, I do makeup. And honestly, the like the trail of emails are about 50 before we get to the point where it's 15th of July. Okay, sorry. Look in the diary. I'm booked. And she was like, booked up already? 5th of July, 2026. I'm oh. like, love, I don't even know what I'm doing next I year. I might not be a makeup artist <laughs> then. I might be a bulldog. <laughs> Chill out. Yeah. That's wild. But I, so as you're saying about turning 40, so what was like, were you, was it like, I think loads of people who turn 40 sometimes go, I feel like I know who I am now. I'm myself. I am like comfortable in my own skin and like yeah. with my life. Or were you like, oh fuck, I have bucket list shit I haven't done yet? A bit of both. I definitely know who I am. I am a crazy fucker. Right. <laughs> and I'm just going to embrace that now. Yeah. There's no point in trying to change that. Um, 
But I also was like, um, and this is just the world that we live in. I haven't achieved enough. I haven't done enough. Most of my friends are married, kids, and then I'm. I was getting to that point where I have to make sure I definitely don't want to go down that path. Yeah. And I knew I didn't, but you have that wee bit of a wobble. Do you mean go down that path of comparing yourself to people who've done? Oh, go down the path of of getting married and having kids. That's not something you want to do. <laughs> no. Okay. I think if you get to forty and you haven't done that, then it's fine. Yeah. You definitely don't want to do it. Um. So I had a bit of a wobble with that. Um. But yeah, I, I just embraced it. And my friends mm. were great and they, they really put in the effort. I think I had about 40 different parties. I'm oh, sure you, I'm sure you saw. Yeah. <laughs> but I I didn't have a... When I turned 30, I couldn't really give a shit. But I remember having a breakdown when I turned 21. Really? I remember... This is 100% true. I remember crying under a Smyrna Vice dress as Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. And the, um, poker face video I was all and I was literally like crying and I was going I that's that do you know what the thing was I was sad that I was like fun time Susie's gone that's it I now have to think about a career she was just being born I know <laughs> 21 I'm a baby oh well over a decade ago but I'm like at the time I was all this is that now now I'm supposed to have a fucking job and I, I was mm. devastated crying and mortified in the middle of the box nightclub <laughs> do you remember oh the box God. yes I do I, I love the box yeah I was, I was even too old to be going to the box when it was still a thing. Oh, really? Yeah. But it was great. You just, um, you just had to do a wee flirt with the bouncers, didn't you? And up to VIP you went. Well, my my best friend Gemma run it. Uh, so I didn't have to flirt with You had contacts? I had a flash of app. My friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, you definitely got in then, didn't you? <laughs> Depends which one I flashed. <laughs> which one's the oh, best shit, one? Oh, shit, one. <laughs> Um, no, I've got loads of stories from Box. Um, one being, um, so Gemma Harvey was running it, and she was my best friend. And I thought I was, I thought I was a superstar at that point. I was just back from London. It was a bit of a ball bag. And um, so that we had you your crown at this point. Um, I had just handed my crown over. Okay. And I'd come back. From so London. it was like you were a big deal at the time. At this yeah, time. Yeah. Well, I thought it was a big deal. It was my. Not that I'm like, <laughs> you're a bill dog man now, but you were a big deal at the time. <laughs> I'm gonna need therapy after this. Um. So went to the box, Gemma brought out all the sparklers and all that shit that goes along with that. And um, she came up about 20 minutes later and said, listen, we just got a phone call. Rihanna's playing in the Odyssey and like she's just going to arrive here. We have to move you into a different area. I was like, no. She was going to arrive into the box. Into oh, the box I thought, right, okay. But I was in VIP yeah. with all my friends and family and I was just like, no. And she You'll was like, take Gemma, out screaming and fucking. You are my friend. You have to move for Rihanna. And I said, no. Anyway, I moved in the end. Aye, but of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my wee claim to fame with Rihanna. Did you see her? Yes. Did you? Was I she did. beautiful? Uh, she's absolutely gorgeous. So and what I'm era was this? Was this Ponder Replay, Disturbia, Irreplaceable? Um, Who was she? Was she Chris Brown? Was she at this point? Who was she? What it was, was around the Chris Brown era. Probably. Yeah. Just, I think they just fallen out. Yeah. I feel bad listening to Chris Brown music because he's a bad boy but yeah. also he's or the other one what do you call him Michael Gally? Jackson no oh. I feel bad listening to his music too well I don't believe There's the Michael Jackson one do you not no but I believe the R. Kelly one and he he wrote oh, Brian right. songs like, AJ number thing ways <laughs> up you dirty brute AJ number how obvious can you be but you all the songs are good that's the problem I know so you're like you're bopping away and then you're like fuck I know you're all getting too many feels here he's a big pedo uh huh but feel that beat <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do I'm definitely gonna get sacked by all the brands after this I know I don't have any brands <laughs> you're alright <laughs> Join me over here with new brands. Uh, I may be co host from now on. <laughs> but I, like, I, there are songs that come on that I'd be like, I'm enjoying this way. Too. Like, I do. So you don't believe the Michael Jackson thing? Because I fully believe that. Although I believe he's disturbed. He was disturbed. So I think he. I think he had. Uh, although, did you ever see the video of him talking on his real voice? There's an get interview. It get it where up. He goes, <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thank you, hey, thank you for coming. Oh, but I thought that was dubbed over. I have I have seen that. Do you think it was yeah. dubbed over? I don't think it was dubbed over. I think it was a wee slip up. Because and then because there's an interview where he said, now I don't know if it, you can see the interview. It's just transcribed where he's like, somebody he, he likes to speak in a falsetto wee voice because it makes him feel like a because he is Peter Pan like he wants to be a wee kid yeah. forever. You know he's definitely got problems. God love him had, but I think with that voice thing he is putting that on. Right. Um, I'm not sure. I, I am gonna it's a bit find blasphemous. it. Blasphemous. What you're saying? Oh really? <laughs> you big MJ fan? Well, I just, I, I just, I think they were after the money, and here we'll never know now. 
So that's it. We will we'll never know, know, but we do know about R. Kelly, that dirty bastard. Yeah. Is he in jail? Did they put him away or what? Uh, yeah. yeah, is he in jail? How long did he go down for? Oh, why is about to make a real dirty joke there, oh. and I shouldn't because he was a bad boy. I'm stopping, Gemma. I've stopped myself. <laughs> Here, here's his real. Now listen to the very start where he goes um and then afterwards he starts going uh, like a fucking singer we hear um, uh, uh, play on his throat now after that okay. wasn't the only thing he was playing with that day, you know? <laughs> no so I, I think that is a character like I'm not a fan of that right Um. here so are you would you be close to your parents because I've I always seen you putting loads of stuff online about like you did a big thing for your dad's sex death didn't you and did yeah. you do loads of stuff yeah, we've done six before six C for my mum and my dad. Yeah, very close with my family. Yeah. Very close. Almost like a wee bit weird. People my friends think it's a bit weird. Like they would come out uh, um party with me. Well your family does? Yeah. Oh that's good. Yeah. Um, because i 'cause I'm I'm close with my parents too, but mine's live like a hundred miles away, which can be like I don't see. Good that. and bad. Well it's it's great because you're like they can't just pop in unannounced exactly like I have to just write into the family group chat because our whole family live close and just yeah. be like no one be just calling a nice tonight and then everyone's like Jenna's got a date yeah like, that's pretty <laughs> obvious the bit you're fucking out in your bushes man. and then I see my Binoculars. sister and my brother-in-law walking past with the dog do you know like one so to try and spy uh-huh. but my so this is what I was going to ask you about because my daddy used to tell me lies all the time do you like your man dad tell you like really simple lies growing up but I my daddy used to tell me and I genuinely believed it that he wrote all the songs in the world all the songs that were on the video he owned them and I believed him and I used to be like at my friend's house now and they'd be like up down get up down get or something come on I'd be all like that wee song do you hey? was that about me that's one of my dad's my dad wrote that and they'd be like no he didn't and I'd be like my dad fucking wrote that for oh Westlake before he ever was <laughs> released it the first time <laughs> swear it's me about 13 still believing it they'd be like why are you all driving a wee shit fiesta then <laughs> like, we're being humble <laughs> <laughs> we're being humble <laughs> he wrote it though like the bullshit and I remember as an adult being all to my dad why did you do that and he was like I just thought it was funny I didn't realize it was going to go as far as it did like that that was a bit gullible of you but anyway yeah because I think parents just fill their kids heads full of shit though don't they when I they... think if they my parents I think it was probably because me... we'd no sky or internet yeah. my dad was like you, c- you couldn't check it out or fact check have any entertainment <laughs> 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 I couldn't fact that's the thing now because I have three stepsons and they can fact check Alexa d- is that true blah 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 and then you're caught out in an instant you I can't know. bullshit kids anymore but how good is it when everyone's saying you're wrong and then Google just says mm, you're right you're right uh, or you go or like because I say I'm like falling out with Sean for something it's all oh, that's not what it is I'm like ah it is hold on do you Google it and then you're all my internet's not working it's not coming up <laughs> it's not working no 4G <laughs> and wanna just, we'll look it up later on Trying to get the Wikipedia page deleted. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, damn, Jane was a pedo. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, I'm so getting cancelled, aren't I? Um, that's the thing, but isn't it? We fucking pure love and cancel culture era. I know. Like, it's have you ever had pure shit online? Like a tirade of people. Be, well, so are you joking me? I, suppose I am after, the fucking queen of this. I suppose after the show. With um, Beauty Queen and Single as well, you might have had people. But well, well before that, like I mean, I've been having that from I was twenty, which is twenty years ago. Um, and did they, was there online then? Uh, was there the internet? Just starting, yeah. Yeah. It was just starting, yeah. It was so much easier though then to not have shit. Did not have those social media platforms where people all felt like they could give you their opinion on you? Exactly, I know. And now there's even one which I won't mention because I don't like to give them the um, the publicity. But there's one where you can go on and um, hide your identity. I and know it's what one really you're talking about. fucking nasty. Like it's really nasty. I know what one you're talking about because there's a lot of talk on there about local people. Oh yeah, yeah. Is it a local website? No, or? no, it's okay. It's, it's global, but um, there's a whole yeah. section about people locally From here, and it's just like the biggest load of bullshit. Damn, um, I'm not famous famous enough to be like talk shit about on that website yet I'm got it <laughs> see at the start like someone I have never been on it because I wouldn't give them the traffic yeah, on, yeah, on the yeah. website but people obviously were telling me bits and pieces and way at the start they were like um, they were talking about a couple of my friends and then someone said what about that cunt Gemma Garrett and someone was like who and I was like so happy right that there wasn't a thread on me but then also saying well I'm a wee bit yeah, my yeah. ego sense a wee bit <laughs> You should know me enough to slag me, bitch. No, but there's definitely a thread now on me. Oh, mm. um, but I my first taste of shit like that was whenever I done Britain and Ireland's Next Top Model, 
and there's yeah. threads there's like a reality tv website it's probably actually called that reality tv website right, okay. <laughs> and there's threads on each individual person and, and then does it affect you at the time mm-hmm. i don't know if it would have a long lasting effect now because it's that's not my career my world mm-hmm. now but at the time just people absolutely ripping you apart you're too fat to be on that you can't be a model like you, you know like i are people just automatically going i don't think she's nice looking and you're like well that's all right doesn't it but i wish you would <laughs> <laughs> but also even if you thought that about someone right you wouldn't if someone came into a coffee shop, you wouldn't just say, I don't think you're good looking. I know. Do you know what I mean? I so know. why on earth would you spend your free time when you should be with your kids or whatever mm. writing about someone you don't know? I think it's because you're a miserable bastard mm. who listens to Chris Brown. <laughs> but like, <laughs> <laughs> I think like, what, exactly like, I would be bloody brilliant but to go around for a day like, and just like Jim Carrey and just say exactly what you're thinking. I know. You'd be horrible because most of my thoughts are pretty fucking nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. No, they're not. They're not. But I found myself recently trying not to even give compliments, even though I told you look great when I saw you, because you're supposed to not mention people's physical appearance to them at I know, all. I know. Good or bad. Like you're supposed to say nothing. You're supposed to just. But then we're living in such a fucking PC world now, where we're just going to end up keeping our heads down and not I talking. Know, I know. And I grew up in an era where if you were emaciated looking, that's what that was good. Yeah. So Kate I Moss, still heroin shake. Yeah. So I still say to people, "Oh my god, you look so skinny. How are you doing it?" As if it's a compliment. I know. And I need to s- stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> because we don't necessarily live in a world where everyone wants to be skinny now. I know. That's not exactly. the thing. Now everyone wants their ar- big arse and thighs and. Mm-hmm. Baps exactly. and all that, so do you know what I mean? I Everyone really wants a big white watch. bap to flash to a bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> Take it into a bar. I don't, I want a wee tiny one, please. Um, I'm still on the t- topic of baps. I'm still breastfeeding my 13-month-old. Oh my goodness, is that not really restricting with alcohol? No. Can you still drink? I do. Does she sleep all the time? Loves it. <laughs> At that wee girl, that's her disco dust. <laughs> She's having a great time. She loves when her man's on the way. Uh, happy days. What's your drink of choice? So I would do a rosé wine. Mm. If I'm looking for an argument, I'll do a mojito. <laughs> That's a bug good for me. Is yeah. it? Oh, Although I'm a deck and make my mojitos with fuck yeah. Which I know people's like that. It's supposed to be Bacardi, is it not? It's supposed to be a Bacardi, but I don't like Bacardi. So I was like, well, it's good with vodka. I still, yeah, I would argue on vodka too. So. You do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or I like a Cosmo, like a wee raspberry Cosmo. Mm. I make that in the house myself. Although every single night I make a Cosmos, I smash the glass. Those, those <laughs> glasses are shit. Do you know the glasses that I got there? I hate glasses like that. What the fuck's that there? It's, I want a good it's like a shot. Paint. I, I sh- paint the Cosmo. Yeah, I make a jug. <laughs> Just drink directly from the jug. There's no jug, I'll use the map bucket. Um, I, but this is a, that's a myth that you can't drink when you're breastfeeding. Oh, right, okay. And I have a friend, like a, like a girl that I know well enough, that wasn't drinking. And it was like six months into your child's life. And I was like, how are you coping? All I want to do when I put my child to bed is... Get a Cosmo and smash the glass. Like, that's all I'm going to do. And she was like, oh, I can't because I'm breastfeeding. I was like, you can. The analogy that I always use is drinking, like the, it's like a shot and a swimming pool. That's what your child's getting. Yeah. They're okay. getting a wee, do you know what I mean? Just a wee tiny hit. Aye. That's fine. Although if you start going on the boob, then you're probably like, I probably <laughs> drank too much last night. Do you know what I mean? It's more like a shot in a map bucket now. Yeah. But um, I was feeding my daughter this morning and she was just, she just after having a banana and peanut butter, and then end up with like a fucking peanut butter covered bath after that. Just lovely. All mm. it's like a, nice. It's like a porn up category. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's, a, there's definitely, definitely a market for that. See, with that OnlyFans, no, I'm telling you, maybe you can think of it. Fortune. Someone's wanking to it. Yeah, I know. Seriously, <laughs> there's somebody right now wanking to peanut butter ditties. Definitely, hundred percent. Did you ever did... get dirty bastards messaging you online? No, and I find the perfect way to stop it. It's great. Right. So. Anyone who messages me anything disgusting and I go on and, and do a wee bit of investigation and have a wife, a girlfriend or a partner, kids, anything, I just say, you've got... Mm, X, Y, Z. You have got 10 minutes oh. to apologise to me or this is going on my story with your wife tagged because I'm a woman's woman. And you are the it, so. lame Neeson of Dirty Bastards. Mm-hmm. Don't like, be doing you're that. You're going to I will find you. Uh-huh. And I will. Or the people who just sit, send a picture of their dick. I'm like, see if you want to. Hey, he's doing that. Dick. Dicks uh-huh. are bogging looking. Like, see if Sorry, I was a Sean. man. <laughs> <laughs> dicks are not attractive. Like, neither is a dude either. None of them is good looking. But why would you send a picture of your dick? I know exactly to someone who you've never met. Yeah. But 
And you don't know if they'll even like a dick. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Why are you assuming? assuming? Um, but say if you want to, to, to get into me, like, just send a picture of a dog. Yes! I mean, you know fine right now I'm going to start up a conversation with yeah. you. Yeah, Peggy Sue's original <laughs> owner lives in your garage. <laughs> <laughs> you get them out every now and then. Like, I've not had, I don't think I've ever had a dick pic. Oh, are you joking me? Sean, what's it? going on? Well, maybe not, maybe I don't think Sean's ever sent me a dick pic. We wouldn't be able to do it. I'm not, not even at the start. I am a real vanilla lover, to be honest, Gemma. I'm not about it. Like, I'll take my own clothes off. We'll get it over and done. Man. We'll do our prayers after. Like, I'm just, I can't be arsed. <laughs> the good Catholics for you. That's why, that's why we don't IVF. We absolutely can't conceive naturally. But it's like, do I want that dick? Or do I want a holiday in the Czech Republic? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> That's what happened. Um so I don't think if I I might do you have Snapchat, do you see? No, I'm way too old for that. I'm way too old and for Snapchat. And I'm too old for TikTok as well, but I'm still on it. See, I got a TikTok. Even that there's probably not the terminology. It sounds like an old person talking. I got a TikTok. <laughs> I got a TikTok. Sounds like a fucking S T D. I got a TikTok. <laughs> I didn't get a to be attic. So I got a TikTok a couple months ago, maybe about two months ago, and after a couple of weeks I was like, This ne- I need to delete this because it's just like... Down a rabbit hole. Whoa, Especially abs- with the Johnny Depp case. Yes, clips I'm of him and Amber. Addicted. Addicted. She, she... So I had it and I found this eye just like shh, fucking scrolling. Also the, the calibre and the quality of content that goes on TikTok... Nobody really cares. Do you know if you like if people are putting content as creators on Instagram or maybe not Twitter, but usually Instagram, there's a certain quality that you'll you know, you'll not just put it so your certain thing you'll put on your stories. Yeah, I totally as, get it. Yeah. As opposed to you put on a reel or a post. Like you'll put on your stories, your fucking dinner, or when you're in your kitchen blocked or something yeah. silly like that. But you wouldn't put it on your grid. You're not gonna put it on your grid or your reel, because it's not that important to everyone's day. Although I put a real shit one on a reel today about first word problems, it definitely should have been a story, but <laughs> I was like, I haven't put anything on a reel in about three weeks. This will do. <laughs> Isn't it so weird? This is the world that we live in. I know. I haven't updated my reel in a couple of weeks. I know. It's embarrassing. No, it really is. I know. So with TikTok, I was like, I need to delete this because I'm watching people lip sync to other people's words. Mm-hmm. And people just like, oh, people just... Some of them are funny now. Oh, some of them are one. great. But that's what I mean if you've got, if you're following good content creators. Mm-hmm. But most of it's just, a lot of it is absolute shite. And I was like, I need to get off this because the target audience is about... <laughs> Stop following me then. Is that what you're trying to say? So I'm trying to convince... <laughs> this is an intervention. Delete your fucking TikTok. <laughs> probably is like even my mom's like Gemma like we go anywhere and I'm doing the whole thing and she's like Gemma now you're 40 love I'm like right well what do you want me to say to these brands don't be paying me all that money every I know month. I know like I what, know. what do people want me to do I know that's it but it's different if you have it because there's a whole misconception that people who do the online thing as a career or for work are doing fuck all it's actually a lot of work it's very time consuming oh my consuming. goodness it is so time consuming Aye. like when I mean, a brand takes you on do you know how long it takes it takes to edit a reel? I know. I couldn't tell you. Especially when sure you're it. in it, maybe fake tanning and you don't even like yourself. Aye. Do you know what I mean? I know. It just takes like maybe three days to get that Really? Yeah, to get that the way they want it, you know. That's a lot of and then and then and then also people would think that that's an overpaid job, but then you look at the amount of hours you put exactly. into it. It's not. It's yeah. it's it's you're that's a the pay you should be getting for that amount of time. Exactly, and yeah. also you spend all the time building a following so that there's People to sell like you know ideas You're going to be too. Interested in that. Yeah, yeah. I, exactly. People who are interested in what you've got to say or things that you're um, promoting, and that takes a shitload of time that nobody pays you for. I know. So it's compensation. Do you know what I mean? I would love, and this is honest truth, not to be on social media, but I then what would I do? Eggs. Well, were you not a politician at one point? Well, neither. <laughs> Remember, I said we'll talk about anything apart from that. <laughs> Right, is this finished? Um, talking, about no... poli- talking about politics, I could be doing a better job in this Aye. country, and that's the truth. If you if you were the head of a political party here, what would your main policy be? What do you feel like needs changed? Um, well, it definitely start with all uh, the rising prices of everything because higher people living. Yeah, like that's a bit scary. I like them coffees you bought there for us. <laughs> First word problems. They were three pound a few months ago, and now they were three fifty. I don't know. I would. I would if I was a politician. The biggest policy I would change is how long you get 
to return shit after you buy it online. Oh my god, is that the top of the list? <laughs> I'm like, do you, know you buy stuff and you've got like you sit the bags by the front door or like your bitter because online shopping now is how you shop. So you buy a couple sizes or you know you do all that and then the shit just sits at the front door and then you go to the post office and it's like eighty six days later and you're like, why need a ninety day window, not thirty? Well, That's you're going to be really about. shocked. I don't shop online for that reason because I've never once returned anything online. So then you got all extra shit. So I just had to stop doing that. I have to go into the shop and try it on. Yeah. Or else I'm just throwing away money. But most of the shit isn't on the shops anymore. I know. That's right. I'm dressing. Is that what you're dressing Was I quicker than you there? You were. Right. That's my I next. I don't want to be rude. I'm a comedian now. She's a comedian now. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, there's not going to be any room on your bio anymore. No, no, no. <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, I but I just feel like I I'll buy I buy stuff online and be all la 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 like that's not real money or it's not really working and then it comes and I'm all I don't want any of this stuff or it's all shite and then it just builds up like I've got about four things sitting at my front door that need returned and I know by the time I go to return them they'll be like it's too late yeah so I think the world would be a far better place if there was a ninety day return window yeah. I would call my party need n m t- need more time party. <laughs> Well, I, I hope that goes well for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I really do. I'll vote for you. Yeah, it's really difficult. Um, do you vote every year? Um, I do indeed. Um, I think everyone should use their vote, even mm-hmm. if it's void. Um, people died so that we could vote. So Exactly. Yeah. I think it's very important. All my friends got absolutely annihilated when I was watching um, the politics there and um, the votes coming in and I was texting all my friends, did you vote? Did you? And they were just like, no. No. And I was just like, that's ridiculous. No matter who you vote for. It makes some difference. Because yeah, even this year, look how there was such a shift. Mm. And that wouldn't have happened if all the people who would be like, what, nothing ever changes, didn't vote. Because it did change this year. Yeah, exactly. Things did change. Even though it, nothing probably Nothing's will change. change for a while. I you know, know what I mean? It doesn't matter. It's still at least something different. It gives people a bit of hope. That, all right, we actually can change things. So now the next time around, let's get like... Green Party or somebody else, yeah. just somebody else who's just not the two main, I think, exactly. would be great. No, I'm 100% with Although you. Although I'm like not really astute about politics at all, but sometimes I get booked to like, do, well, let's look at the blame game. I'm on the blame game and that's like a political show. And it's so funny because every week there was like, it, there's like, it's like mostly politics. So you have to look at the news stories of the week and then it goes round us all and we all have to like give our take on it and all. And then there's Tim McGarry who's like... Amazing, I, I, I get, love that man. Yeah, I love that man. He's a genius. But I get all of my political intel from just from listening him. to him. But he's making jokes, so I have to be aware, is this one real or not? <laughs> is, this, is this made up? Taking notes. <laughs> I'm like, Colin, is that bit true? <laughs> We're all laughing, but I don't know. Is she? Is she a bastard? <laughs> and then like and then Neil who's Neil Delmere is more politically astute in the north than most people are up here like he knows more about our politics and than I do yeah. Colin Murphy as well and then there's the last stories of the week that we talk about that's like you know somebody's chihuahua got pregnant with triplets and <laughs> to a fucking pigeon or something and I'd be like I'll, I'll take that story because <laughs> that's, that's the one I know most about I know about. most about the pigeon pregnancies <laughs> Then I do about Arlene Foster or not her HI. I'll do the pigeon pregnancies. Thank you. Like, that's how that's how politically astute I am. Don't know why they have me on that show. <laughs> me neither. It's like a weekly political panel show. It's like, I can't talk about pigeons. Is that right? <laughs> I know. Um, so what have you got coming up next? Have you anything you want to... Um, You're a business owner as well, aren't you? Yes, I am. I um, have a business called Buella and it's all about cruelty-free products, ethically sourced um, organic things and it's going really well but I do have a couple of things coming up but I can't really say but I can tell you afterwards oh my god really exciting mm-hmm. it's a TV stuff yes ah yeah. it's a TV thing that's starting very very uh, soon oh very good is it will it be here it's here um, I think they're going to actually announce it maybe this week or next week so um, I've got that coming up and yeah how exciting do you enjoy doing TV work because you sort of moved into TV but you went there with with Beauty Queen and Single. Yeah. And I enjoy um, when I'm being myself. Yeah. when uh, Like know. hosting, like in that scenario, rather yeah. than acting? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And not even presenting. It has to be me. I know what who, you mean. Do you know what I mean? I'm being myself and there's no restrictions on it, so. Yeah. I would I would agree with you and I'd be very similar in the sense that if somebody gave me a script to like be a host of something... You can guarantee I'm not going to say the page they gave me. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm going like, to be sacked on the first day. Yeah. But even like when I, like in shows, of, like an acting, like a true, I paraphrase everything. And it's not because I'm like, this sounds better. It's like, 
I can't remember what they wrote on that page. Yeah. <laughs> Something about pen. Ha- I'll just make it up. <laughs> I'm just like, and they're like, that's not what you're supposed to say. And I'm like, that's what I've said. <laughs> that's what you've got. I remember actually contacting you years ago about I went for an audition. <gasps> that's and right. And helped me out. And I, I never forget stuff like that because I am a real supporter of women. Um, and you went to so much hassle to try to help me. Didn't get it, by the way. That's because <laughs> so it was me helping you. <laughs> I said, go on and do a German accent. They'll fucking love it. She's from Balamina. Do you know she's from Balamina? Try it, Gemma. <laughs> Take the chance. They'll fucking love it. But thank you so much for, for trying to help me. What was that? Was it a movie? It was a movie part, yeah. How mm-hmm. do you handle stuff like that, like rejection? And I hate even using the word rejection because it's just not getting the job. But mm-hmm. I, it happens to me every day. Like, and I'd be like, la la la, I forget all about it by now. But at the start, I used to cry when yeah. I didn't get jobs. Like, yeah. I used to get so affected by it. And mm-hmm. now I'm like, what I off think rejection back? is redirection without being a cringy bastard. But it is true. Yeah. Um, and my mom always says, what's for you won't go past you. And that's stuck by me as well. So I think a lot of times, too, not getting a job especially if you work in entertainment it usually has meant that you're available for something else something else that comes along I know yeah. like a trip to Ikea or yeah. just <laughs> dinner with friends exactly stuff like that. can somebody it. else pay we I haven't worked it. yeah because <laughs> yeah, I, I used to like I remember just constantly stalking actors who did get the parts that I'd auditioned for yeah and there were some with it. you do and then you're like and then you're like comparing yourself and you know when it's not it's not really a healthy thing to do um, they're all in my basement right now. <laughs> they haven't worked since. <laughs> but um, like even like Sean too used to always try and be like you need to like let those ones go. Like it's not like I used to find out that I didn't get parts when the show would come on the TV. And that's a bit shitty. And I would yeah. e- email my agent going, here, do you remember that part we're on here back on? It's all right, don't bother. Like it's just come on the TV. <laughs> They shot it six months ago. I don't think I got it. Yeah, like, um, if do you have friends dies, in, in the industry? Would you have close friends in the industry? Yeah. That, I think that makes it harder as well when you're up for things against your, your mates. Your and peers. That's, that would be me and, and Paddy McGurgan. A couple of things we go up for things against each other and he would get it and sometimes I get it or whatever and you just have to leave that mm. in the work section and then go for dinner that night. Yeah. And I think that... Do you know hard? what? I think my the cl- people I'm closest with in the industry aren't like for like, so they wouldn't be like my closest actress friends would be probably slightly older than me. Right. So we wouldn't be up for the exact same parts. Exa- yeah, that's good. And like one of my best friends is a writer, so but also she writes more TV stuff and I write more theatre stuff, mm-hmm. so we're not really up against the same things either. And all the comedians have dicks. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. Th- there's not really a direct... Um, Although, like, did they not know about your dick yet? Well, I just I left it at home today. Oh, right, okay, all right. <laughs> I clipped mine on. <laughs> Clip it off. It depends on the outfit. Uh, right. Okay. I need a wee a wee waft of air on my dress. All right. I thought you would have had it on. Today. I had a wee bulge. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think like with people being in direct competition with you, it's always like I I welcome more women to move into comedy here because there's fucking room for more mm-hmm. like there really is there's not that many there's a handful of girls who are doing comedy here and I just think there's there's plenty of room for more there's plenty more room for women who are like to write theatre like there's only two or three of us who are writing comedy plays for theatre here mm-hmm. as well there's absolutely room for more of course I went to a wee comedy night there in the uh, the Ulster Club not to be patronising a wee comedy night we... <laughs> it was they were comedy. all tiny <laughs> They were all like five foot one. Sorry, what's what's the proper lingo? Tell me. Just went a comedy to, night. Just a comedy night I went to. It wasn't a wee one. Um, and my friend was was doing it, and I was just like, "You have to have balls of steel, like oh my god, balls I... of steel." Your because friend was on stage. Yeah. Female comedian uh-huh. or male? Fe- and Rebecca. See, yeah. yeah. Oh, Rebecca. Yes. yes, I know Rebecca. Um, and yeah, I was just like, that's really hard because comedy is. There's some nobody pe- to blame either. If it doesn't go well, you're like, well, that was my fault because yeah. I that that wasn't some funny. Pe- like some of the the acts that were on, I thought were hilarious. Some was I I was thinking that's not really funny to um, you, and and that's just to me. Yeah. So uh, it's hard. It's like art. It's anything. It's mm-hmm. like it's like you wouldn't see. I think people go to comedy nights. Go to wee comedy nights. <laughs> And they're all, where's all the wee comedians? You took that bad love, didn't you? Like? Where's all the wee comedians? Come on out, make me laugh. No, but with, with, you go to a comedy night and you go, well, all these things should make me laugh. 
But you wouldn't go to like a concert and there's like an opera singer on followed by a rock band, followed by a rap artist, followed mm. by a blues band That's, and go, yeah. I want to enjoy all those. They all have to cater their style tonight towards me. Well, I would me. think that. But would anyway, you? Yeah. Why is that we opera bitch <laughs> singing weird? Put no, your saxophone I, down, please, boy. Fucking I shit. Totally, I totally get what you're saying, and that's a good analogy of it. Yeah, because you would go to a comedy night, then you may have like a one liner comedian followed by a storyteller, followed by a musician, followed by, you know, make check with the deck on stage. <laughs> <laughs> you have a wide variety on stage, but you'd never expect to find them all hilarious. That's mad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You'd be lucky to find one. But I think that so many people who go to the wee comedy nights here locally. <laughs> But he's really who have never who don't go to them that regularly are so surprised that like how good it is. Definitely, well, I'm gonna go back to a wee one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go to a big one where they're all big tall yeah. boys and girls. Um, because I think that most people be like, you know, they'll buy they'll buy tickets in a second to like Michael McIntyre and Peter Kay and all the big comedians and they'll happily part with fifty quid. But like to part with seven pound to go to a local comedy night, you're all I don't really know because Michael McIntyre won't be on. Yeah. Um, and then you go and you're all oh that was really good. Like no, the quality uh, of acts here is so good now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. Really, really enjoyed it. I, and I'll definitely go back to it. Do you think it's something you could try? No, I'm not funny. I'm sarcastic. I'm definitely right. not funny. But you know, I find like the hardest thing is talking to an audience member, and you're like, I'm in the verge of just getting under your eye. No, I know. Do you know what I mean? Starting to hackle and all, and Rebecca was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" I know, and you go default and you start slagging them and you're all, this is, in any other scenario, you get I, this is a hate crime. Uh-huh. <laughs> get being, your hair kicked then. I'm being horrible. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think I've ever had to deal with like people being like really, really heckling, like really, mm. s- do you know what I mean? But like, I haven't, I've only been doing comedy a couple of years, but um, Sean, like my husband, has been to like the back hole of everywhere, including mine. Oh. <laughs> 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 right <laughs> yeah it's not very established I'm a vanilla lover <laughs> um, and like gig to like the worst crowds like everyone's f- least favourite gigs are in Lurgan really we are just most likely to get battled I've never there been, I've never been to Lurgan so have you not no why would you though <laughs> like because obviously so I live in Craig Avon and everybody's response we live living I go Craig Avon they're all why like that's <laughs> it if you said you'd have anywhere else they go all right Move on, but straight away. It's I a wee bit like Lauren as well. Come on. But what the fuck's wrong with Lauren's lovely. I let no one say shit about Lauren. Have you been to Lauren? Lauren's <laughs> lovely. They've got water. <laughs> I've drove past it. Lauren is <sighs> gorgeous. I think Lauren's lovely. I'd go out there and go. I'm having a day out. They've got a wee castle. Do they? A wee ruins. It's like a it's like a wall or two. It's like an old castle. <laughs> no, you're not saying that, love. I uh, think Lauren is lovely. I think it gets Lauren and Lurgan get real. Yeah. Get get a real hard time. Where are you? From? You're from Belfast. I am originally from Ballybee. Is that that's Belfast? That's in Dundonald. Right, which is Belfast, isn't it? Well, East Belfast, outskirts. Did Belfast. you grow up not really going near like West Belfast? Oh, why? I, we were scared shitless. Now all my friends are from the west. <laughs> why be scared shitless? Oh, just well, I I'm much older than you. All the rioting. I remember going into a bar, I don't know if you'll remember it, called The Apartment Bar. Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. In City Centre? Yeah. Hi. How many years are between us? Oh, I'm 33. All right, I thought you were younger. No, um, thank you. And my dad was just like, yeah, are you going to go and socialise in the centre of Belfast? And that was just in my lifetime of actually yeah. going out. Because each you know I mean? section of Belfast is like a self, like a uh, contained village, really. You don't really need yeah. to go to the city centre because there's uh, everything exactly. there. And just because my mum and dad actually lived through the troubles. Yeah. I was just like Belfast, like was just so scary. Mm. I, was, I moved to Belfast when I was 18 to Halls and I remember my dad being like, don't tell anyone your surname, <laughs> Doherty. He's like, oh no. They'll know from the first one as well, love. Sorry. Tiona. <laughs> Checks out. It's when I said like, Tiona. Then mother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My dad was like, don't tell anyone your name, especially if you're going to do a taxi. And I was like, because when you ring a taxi, use a fake name. Don't tell them your surname. What, what was the fake name going to be? I used to use my friend's name, Cunningham. Oh. Because it so sounded definitely English like. <laughs> But like it's like uh, Cunningham, um, or just make up names like Marge something. No, I never did yeah. that. But I, my dad was like, they'll know, they'll fucking know. And I was like, no, what? None of us in our house believe in God. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're all atheists. What are you talking really about? Really, an atheist? Yeah. Are you not? Are you religious? Mm-hmm. Um, my mum would be religious. My mum's believe in God. She's Catholic. The rest, my daddy was an atheist, so we were raised where you could 
choose either way, even though I went to Catholic school. So growing up, I didn't really know any Protestants whatsoever at all. Because in the dairy, there's a river between these. So you right, don't really, yeah. like there's a city centre and then there's a watershed and that's the difference. Like you are literally, like, you'd have to go over the bridge and that's just too scary for a child. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't drive, I'm eight. So like you don't really see any Protestants. And only the other day, I said, my husband supports Liverpool Football Club. Not the city, I'd be so mad if he was just like <laughs> delighted. <laughs> he was just like, yay, Liverpool. So he supports Liverpool. And I rem- I said to Marty, I, I go up thinking all Liverpool fans were Protestants. And he's like, why? And I was like, because I never met a Protestant and I never met a Liverpool fan. So I assumed they had to be together somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> or like the same person. I think it is a bit, <clears throat> there is a bit of that though when it comes to Liverpool and Everton. Everton's mostly Catholic. Is it? Uh-huh, supporters. Liverpool is mostly Protestant supporters. Well then, so, so, there was, so there was a bit, there was of, a bit of logic in it. In it. Yeah. It's oh, just because I'd about. never seen either of them and I was like, they all must live in the Protestant <laughs> land over yonder together. Across the bridge. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we were raised where we didn't have to go to Mass or anything. Like I never went to Mass growing mm. up. Only to do my first communion so I could go in the houses and get money. And get all the money. Yeah. But tell me this, when you're on a really bumpy plane, do you still pray? No. No? No. No. Nothing when anything bad's happened to you? Would you not go, oh my God. No. 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 So you're actually atheist. Oh, 100%. I just don't believe there's anything out there. So Although just I- die and that's it? Absolutely. Although I fully like would love to believe in something because then there's like hope, isn't there? Where you're like, well, it doesn't, you don't end, like you don't end all together when you, whereas I, I do think. Are you just going to pay for my therapy session after this? At <laughs> <laughs> oh, least you'll pay for my cremation. <laughs> 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 so that's where I'm going. Like no. I want, I want for I want to die before Sean, because he bores the life out of me. I want to die before Sean, get cremated, being like a nice like jute shaped basket or something on the fireplace, and I want him to chat to me, even though it's fucking shit because I'm dead. But I I want to be if if he brings a bitch in the house, I'll be like. On the mantelpiece. Right. I guess here. <laughs> I want him to sh- shape my, me and do like a statue, I guess here. <laughs> so if he brings a bitch in. That's my wife. I'm really sorry. She's raging. You have to go. <laughs> um, so I'm definitely going to do But you're like, you want to have the whole funeral? Um. No, fun- no I'll be cremated too. I think... By the time we were all dying, everyone, no space uh, everyone will have to get cremated. Please don't put me, uh, honestly, family, please don't put me in the ground. We're going to cut this bit out. Uh-huh. <laughs> so Just they'll never case. know. My aunt, when my auntie passed away, God love her, right? She died really suddenly. But when she passed away, in the Catholic masses or funerals, whatever, they do a whole this here, bing, 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 over the coffin yeah. and all the fucking powder comes out and it's all highly scented. You all the... I don't know what the, the, the priest definitely doesn't be all but like, <laughs> whatever he's doing and it's all like um like incense stuff right and I remember being all That's she's me. fucking asthmatic <laughs> I genuinely was all she's she'd fucking hate this she she's on there coughing along up I hope you're happy with yourself she was like you did not think about that then she's thought it was rude <laughs> I don't even know what that is but it's just a whole pile of shit. Do you know that smell? If you've ever been on a, ch- a chapel, there's like yeah. a full smell. Like an incense slash guilt. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of Judgment. Whiff. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, that poor woman's asthmatic and using her clatter in her and a whole pile of stuff. What's going to make her cough along up? Aye, so for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> She's out. Yeah. Cremate her as well. Um, yeah, so we were never raised religious, so I didn't. I remember there was a crying chapel attached to the mat, like the chapel. It was called the crying chapel. Where people went to cry? No, you bring your yappy babies. If you went to mass, we a yappy baby. Oh, you had to go You had to go into the crying chapel and bring your wee yappy child because they weren't allowed to interfere with the priest, but the priest could interfere oh. with them. <laughs> you got there quicker than me. <laughs> Yeah, they were like, take that child up there. So me and my friend used to go to mass for like the crack sometimes, like as like seven and eight year olds. We were, we were both That's seven. what the priest went for as well. Yes. Mm. Who's crack though? <laughs> and we would go in and bring prams with wee dolls on it. And me and her would stand in the crying chapel, which had like a microphone so you could hear the mass. You don't want to miss the mass. And we're standing there where, shh, 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 we plastic doll, shh, 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 shh. All the real mass there with actual babies and bottles and the That's babies are crying. That's what happened to you. You should have been listening to what was going on, what God was saying to you. I'd have had a better path in uh-huh. life. 
I'm on there. That's probably mm-hmm. why I wasn't I had to do IVF because they the God. <laughs> I'm in mass where pla- God's like you. We're gonna take that away from you, right? Fuck that. <laughs> you don't deserve it. <laughs> Cut that bit out, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you got a, something that sticks out in your mind, remember when? Um, pop culture. Yeah, or anything. Uh, I remember when I remember seeing Britney Spears on the edge of a mountain, singing. Was a black smoke? It's Cave Hill. Cave Hill. No, what do you call that song? Not yet a woman. Oh, I'm not a girl. girl not, not yet, yet a, woman. a woman. And she had abs. It was the first time I ever seen abs on a woman. Aye. And me and my sister, we were away on holiday at the time when it came on one of the, the music videos. Remember music videos? You I don't know. even see them anymore. And then when did money, they used to put on music videos too. It's like a big, big, big thing, I a music know. video. But I remember me and my sister were just like, and the next thing, my mom was like, are you ready for dinner? And we were like, we're not eating. And the two of us were doing fucking crunches on, on holiday on the Just floor. like, I'm not <laughs> a girl. <laughs> and my mom was like, oh. what are you doing? Honestly, it lasted for about, I don't think book a cough for about a week. Because uh, everything was just so sore. But then we oh, forgot about Britney it. Britney Spears, I think probably was the first then to go against the grain of Kate Moss heroin chic. Yes. And be like, no, and I'm going to be strong and athletic strong and anyway. dance and have a dancer's physique. Yeah, 100%. And we were just mesmerised by her. I remember her, baby, one more time, like going into Virgin and me and my brothers going half hours for her single. It was 3 99 oh Do you know what? And I had an A and a B side. I don't remember what was on the B side, but and the, the picture of the, it was like really close up and she had her wee furry pom-poms in her hair and her wee bit questionable schoolgirl mm, outfit. Yeah, very sexualised when you think about it now. Well, we used to dress up as schoolgirls for Halloween. <laughs> Whilst the money. we were schoolgirls. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's like leaving a shift as a nurse and dressing up as a nurse in the bedroom for your husband. I know. It'd be like, am I on shift? Do you need a catheter <laughs> removed? Like, it doesn't make sense. But we would dress up as like, like what is it about that? Like, and we would be like, I'm dressing up as a sexy schoolgirl. And my man and dad be all... Go you, honey. Have a great time. Like, there's no one questioning this. I remember these people. I wanted to be a model, and these old men were like, "I'll take pictures of her." And my man going, "Okay." Oh my god! And, and they get think, out their wee disposable camera. <laughs> I think back. I think back, and I'm like, "Mom, why did you let me go down to that man's fucking garage <laughs> and get pictures taken of me?" And did you? <laughs> yes, of course I did. No, they were fine. They're probably all dead now, anyway. But I mean, would you let your child do it? No. So, so you'd have went down to these garages to get photographs taken, and what would have happened with those photographs? Like, did you take them home, or was it like a, I know somebody in the world of modelling? No, no, no. Uh, they would have went into your portfolio then. Oh, for like your portfolio. portfolios now we are all online, but back then you actually had. I a had hard a book copy. when I was in yeah. it too. Yeah. So, um, and I oh, my, most of my portfolio was from like the BAP up, just because yeah. I had a real fat ass. And nobody was on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, here. No, everyone's into fat ass. No, I'm all day. about that ass. <laughs> like at the time, I was all just gonna do belly button up modeling, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> got real chunky thighs and an ass, and no one's under that in the fucking early two thousands, are they? No, no. Um, as thin as you could be. Yeah, Gemma, it's been an absolute pleasure Thank having you so on. much for having me on. Please cut all the bad stuff. We're gonna no. cut, uh, just so cut here, it. <laughs> you have I yeah. Do well, before we finish up, you're gonna tell me about your tattoos because I have a cherry blossom tree here and you have a cherry blossom tattoo. Yeah, so I have talking about uh, religion. I have a wee uh, tattoo on my arm. It says believe. Um. So very good. That's, that's just lovely. about my faith. And I'm just back from holiday uh, with uh, four girls and I talked to everybody. We were drunk. Talked everybody into getting an infinity sign for our friendship. Oh, that's lovely. Everybody went. And then I said, no, no, I don't want to get it. <laughs> and my friend Carly Bell absolutely threw the dummy out of the pram. was just like, you cannot do this on us. Hold like, on. <laughs> so they got theirs. Yeah, and you were I sat there all. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> G- G- <laughs> my mom just seen it going on Instagram. was like, if you get a tattoo, like there's something wrong with you. You're 40. That's all I get now. You're 40. Um, You're anyway, a bit of a gas later. I'm not going <laughs> to... Anyway, Carly um, basically held me down, so I have it too. So the four of us are branded forever. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. I have a matching tattoo. With Sean? No. <laughs> Panza, he wouldn't get a fucking tattoo. <laughs> Although he'd love a tattoo, but he doesn't think he's interesting enough. I wouldn't disagree with him. <laughs> God love him. I think he would love like a full sleeve or something, but it's a lot of like, it's a lot of time and effort. Takes and a money. Lot and money. But I um have a matching tattoo on my hip with a girl who was my best friend for years. We grew up together and we fell out there for like four years. 
And he's friends now. We rekindled our friendship recently. Because of the tattoo? Yep. I rang her and was all, do you remember that Chinese tattoo we got done? <laughs> I've just found out mine's means chicken curry and fried rice. <laughs> so we got to get these covered up. But so we have a Chinese symbol, like how, like how cliche and how tacky, but we were 18 at the time and whatever. It does mean friendship. Although I have found, I have come across at least 30 people who have had the exact same tattoo since. Tacky, ba- like we're tacky bastards. Listen, I, do you know that I just done this last week? Like if anyone's tacky, it's me. <laughs> No, it's over 18 <laughs> decades. The next morning, I, I looked over. Cardi was lying beside me looking up laser. Laser tattoo removal. I was like, is it that? Whilst her tattoo scabbing up. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the worst, though. I looked up to it. Because I have one, one on my back that I got done when I was 15. Right? It looks like an upside down crab. It's meant to be some sort of... It's a tramp stamp. It's brutal. Where is but it? I, the bottom of your back? The bottom of my back. Oh, of course. And oh, it's, of like course. Three, it's like Braille. It's like 3D. <laughs> you touch it, it's full Braille. I swear to God. Right? It doesn't... It's not in my skin. They've like... I don't know what mm. it is, but I got it done in Gran Canaria with my man and I because I threatened them. I was all, if you don't take me to get a tattoo, I will get one when we I'm get home. Face. And fuck knows where I'll get it done and how what dirty bastard will be near my hole. I says, you better. My dad. You took, sound like a gaslighter, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, my dad took me and we got, he, he chose it. And it, as a, I get shout, but like at the time, you know, you go back for your holidays and you're like 15 and you're all. I've got yeah, got yeah. a tattoo. I'm a woman now. If you just need to know anything about life, ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all the answers. <laughs> um, and it's absolutely shite. But I don't regret them because I couldn't give a shit. I don't give a shit now either. No, it's like what well, is what it is, isn't it? It's like Pete Davidson. He uses his tattoos as like a. It's like a story. It's like his Instagram. Aye. Uh, yeah. He's bored and he's just like tattoos himself. Like he's got a Kim Kardashian's kids initials on his neck and all. Oh dear. Isn't that wild? That's a wee bit wild, yeah. And. He's got like five tattoos that are like meaningful for her. And I think that's what, because he's got ones for like Ariana Grande and all the other exes he's had. So I would be like, that's about. That would be lovely for Kim at the minute, like, wouldn't it? I know, a wee mm-hmm. Ariana one, but then sure. Listen, thank you very much for joining thanks me for today. Me. Thanks for your remember when that I forgot to do. <laughs> thanks for reminding me for that. <laughs>